Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee meeting for Tuesday evening, June 18th, 2019. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. To introduce the members for the viewers at home and watching the replay for those watching, by the way, or not watching, uh, the replay is actually they do a great job. You can even see it at midnight tonight or definitely tomorrow morning on the town website under channel 22. Go to Ham uh, Hampton Municipal Budget Committee anytime you want, 24 seven and watch it as well as other meetings. We'll start with my far left introductions, please. Ginny Bridal Russell, school board representative. Russ Bridal, selectman's representative. Steve Henderson. Brian Warburton. Mike Bluff. Bob Ladd, village district representative. Joyce Capertis. David Morrow. Stephen LeBranch. And we have Barbara Kravitz, our administrative assistant, who does a fantabulous job of the uh, minutes. And I have to say, uh, they're always out there and plenty of time. And you notice we've been trying to do the same thing with the agendas, too. And I think it really helps with people coming into the meetings. Um, so I hope everyone brought their copy of the draft minutes from Tuesday, May 21st. I'll go uh, page at seven uh, pages. I'll go page by page. And if anybody has any changes, uh, any changes to page one? Any page changes to page two? Page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. And the last page, page seven. Motion to approve the minutes. A second. Moved by Mr. Pluff, seconded by Mr. Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstain? Dave Marr is abstaining. So we have uh, eight in favor and one abstain. That's, yeah. Right. Eight in favor, one abstain. Okay, so let me start off by saying a couple things to so, so set the stage for tonight and really start thinking about as we lead into September when our first meeting back after tonight will be September 17th. And as been tradition, the school administration comes in along with our school board rep, Mrs. Bridal, and they give us kind of a precursor for the coming year, that the budget they'll bring forth in March. Because keep in mind, July 1, their 2019-2020 budget will commence in a couple weeks. And then we also get pretty close to getting final end of the year surpluses, what's, been, what's going on, how do we look, a snapshot. So that being said, I've sent you all a lot, and we're going to start off with the school tonight, but I sent you all a lot of information, and, and the, the real big thing about why this is important, you can look at these great reports and you can marry them with budgetary items, uh, budgetary requests that we're going to start reviewing in the fall. And it's important to kind of digest what's going on and watching. I'd also urge all of you, and I, I can tell you that I do, I watch all the selectmen's meetings, the school board meetings, the zoning, the planning. Uh, it's, it's very important because I think you keep abreast and get a feel for what's going on. We also received, as a matter of fact, we'll do that first. We also received on Friday afternoon a report from Christy Pullum for the May financials. And if you watched the selectmen's meeting last night, she went over them. Um, but I'll, I'll go around the table because I had a few observations. And in part of the thing tonight, we talk about key indicators and things we see happening. Um, and much of it's in the plus, much of it we're going to watch. And then as we move into the budget request for the 2020 budget that we'll get in the fall, give us an idea of you know, where we're seeing. So technically, we've got um, you know, five and a half months of data uh, so far, and we are you know, going to be commencing again September. So I'm just going to start over with Stephen. It doesn't have to be in any particular... If you don't have anything, that's fine too, but this was a memo sent uh, by Christy to all of us, uh, revenue summary, expense summary, which gives you the, the first sheet, 
and then it really goes into detail. I had a few observations, but I'll, I'll certainly let my fellow members go first. Stephen, did you have anything on that? Or? No, and I did print it out. I only printed the first two pages. Okay. And, um, it's talking fine. talking about the one that she just released yeah. yesterday. Well, it was actually June 14th. She right. sent it out Friday night. Yeah. Okay, but they read it last night at the Oh, Saturday. yes, correct. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, we got it in the Christy mail. Christy went over it. And I, I watched that her presentation last night, and I think I don't have any questions at all. Um, of course, she always does a great job, and she explained it very well. So I'm all set with it. Thank you very much. Okay. No Dave? comment. Okay. No comment as well. Okay. Michael. Uh, motor vehicle tends to go up every year, steady climb. Uh, yep. We never. It, it, we just get a the amount of money. I wonder if the registrations fluctuate up and down or if it st stays basically the same and the, the amount of money is generated by the newer vehicles and the more cost because the town tax would be up and so would the registrations. So it, it, I, I don't know if, if the clerk can separate that out we, we've never asked for that before at the budget committee but it would explain how that revenue keeps climbing year after year so for the viewers at home let me just explain thank you mr Plum. in the month of may there was a total of total motor vehicle revenue came in at three hundred eighty two thousand four hundred and twelve dollars and it does seem to be increasing every year right. so i think if i understand your question where, where are we seeing pockets of that is it does do you know, Mr. Brado, where that? Well, it, it, it's all based on the on the the, pro, the cost of vehicles, mm -hmm. and uh, as vehicles go up, as we all know, you bought a car ten years ago and you you pay for it now. Right. Even if you bought a car two years ago and what you pay for it now, the cost goes up, and it's based on a, a you know a, a percentage of that. So right. obviously, the, the more the vehicle is, the more the that, it's going to escalate. Would explain the steady increase yeah. in the amount of dollars. Right. Right. Maybe we don't need it. But. And, and the economy is good right now, and, uh, yeah. you know, people may have more than one vehicle. Well, I'm just going to say, uh, go ahead, right. Mr. Henderson. Yeah, I, just to relay what uh, Rusty just said, basically, I mean, people are replacing their cars now because the economy is better. Right. Um, you know, cars getting older, people are buying newer cars, and the newer cars, of course, you're going to pay a more. higher fee. Yeah. So with the higher fee, you know, it should increase, you know. Right. It has. Yeah. Over the years. Yeah, and I think you're right, Mr. Brado, as far as cust uh, customers, um, <laughs> residents having more than one vehicle. I mean, I don't, I don't know that many people who have just one. You know what I mean? So you're registering right. a lot more vehicles, right? And in, in the whole uh, around the whole town, it seems, plus additional that may move in for all of a sudden. We're getting new residents all the time now, yeah. too. That's a, you know. Or people may have moved here three months ago, and all of a sudden they say, "I got to get my red vehicle registered in Hampton. I'm no longer a resident of." Plus, it's motorcycles. It's motor well, that's yeah, it. It's trailers. That's it. It's all is these it, other things too. Yeah. yeah. Is it also for summer residents who may be registering their car during this period of time? No. Um, for have to be a resident. No, okay. if they're res, for instance, if you're a resident of Massachusetts, <coughs> you own property here, you, you're still paying Massachusetts for your right. car registration. Right? Oh, car registration. Yeah. Thank you. Or motorcycle, or whatever. Uh, right. But that, that's an excellent point. Anybody else on that particular section? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Go ahead, Mr. LeBranch. You know, when, when Christy mentioned the auto registrations last night, growing, 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 right. and of course we just love that revenue. And I, I, my first thought immediately was, gee, you better start getting mentally prepared for the next 10 years when you have self-driving cars and nobody even owns a car anymore. Because okay? that day's coming, and it's coming fast. <laughs> and instead of getting in a car that's sitting in your garage 99% of the time to go to Market Basket, you're just going to use your smartphone to call it a driverless Uber that's going to take. But the, the car revenues at that point, and all the, co all the big uh, auto companies are looking at this as well, because right. they're trying to figure out what's going to happen in the future as it starts going this way. And, right. you know, auto, auto ownership it's going to change. Could, could that, the whole animal is yeah. going to change, and, and I think we're going to see it in, in our lifetime too. So interesting. Just a little sidebar. Sorry. No, absolutely. Anybody else on? Uh, let's go by this on the revenue or expense summary portion. I just wanted to mention the um, 
it, it's really important stuff that Christie presents. So in, under the expense summary, it's it's kind of common, right? So we get excited that we've under budget, you know, spent on the budget. However, we know that summer's coming. That's going to all collapse and get closer as we go. But um, she's got all the different department heads, um, you know, listed as far as you know where they are at this point on expenses, um, and then any activity that's related to warrant articles has gone up. So we approve warrant articles in March, April we may have got have the preliminary meetings, whatever. Then you see things starting based on the warrant articles that were approved. So that's that's good. Um, the, the question I had, um, and, and Rusty, I'll put all this email to you, These, so you don't have to worry about writing all this down, but on the funds other than general fund, it shows Fund 25 Cable Committee has a balance of $244,903. This amount has decreased as the payment to SEU 90 was made, which is correct. But if you go down to the end of the report, it actually shows an amount over 500, uh, almost 500, so I don't know if that caught up I'll point it out to you when I send it to you. I think it's more of a typo or it hasn't been totally audited through May. Maybe yeah, the payment right. didn't come through June 1st. Right. That, that's probably it, so it may not be. But right. that's, a key, that's a key factor, too, because that's a big chunk of money that the, was given uh, towards the school on that. Um, license, permit, and fees, you all saw uh, and in the shared revenue section of the state of New Hampshire. Um, highway uh, subsidies, we get revenue... Um, from there, which is which, all good stuff. I would ask that you know you continue to look at these various sections and kind of digest them over the summer, and really kind of get into understanding um, uh, you know the whole gamut of um, what's happening. I just want to um, the next part I want to go to is general government under A. Um, if you if, if you, so that's page uh, let me see on my it's page 19 of 20. So we're almost through three quarters. Because I think there's some interesting things happening there, and I wanted to go around the table and see if anybody saw anything that stood out, because uh, I know I did. Uh, we'll start over with Ginny this time. No. Nope. Mr. Bridal? All set. Mr. Henderson? I'll start this time. Mr. Pluff, legal? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Between the outside and the, and the in house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll have some figures in a second for that. But Mr. Ladd, you have? I would say legal, too. <clears throat> yeah. uh, Ms. Skippertis? Nothing. Mr. Mara? I'll I'm going to go with the same thing, the legal. It didn't stick out. Yeah, and know, understand, like 50 and we all passed on information which we're not going to discuss the cases outside council, but I think it's, it, I think the public needs to understand where we're seeing some major increases. So when you look at the 2017, the 2018 year, which have both been audited and finished, and you look at so far in 2019, the outside legal. Now, this may vary probably, I'm going to say, by five dollars to $6,000 because some of those costs I had question about. But we're talking about $320,000 for outside counsel. On top of that, the 2017 and 2018 legal department, that's, that's Attorney Gerald and his staff in office, both those years come up to 254,000. So not even including this 2019 for the, you know, not counting the outside council fees, you know, we're looking at $570,000. I, I think it's important because as we come into the budget season, these are areas within the budget, I think, and they've been discussed before, um, you know, that is, I think there's gonna be a lot of discussion around the area. Now, we understand that things happen. And, you know, years ago, when we had, and I know Mrs. Brower Russell and Mr. Pluff remember this, when we had a town attorney, they were our town attorney, but they weren't employed by us. They were our town attorney who handled everything, but they were, quote, outside counsel. So we technically had just that, and there was one expense uh, involved with that, and, and that's being said. So I bring that up because, to me, that, that stood out. This year, it seems to me every year it's almost more than that, and it's the other concern I have is uh, there are 120 percent of budget through May. Uh, that's that's <coughs> going to be something we want to watch as we go through the fall. Uh, anybody else have any other opinions on that or anything else with the general government? I just have one question for the in-house counsel, so the department, the legal department that you're speaking of. 
Um, is it just a salary, or do they do they do they have billable hours that they present so that we know the time that's spent on so we can really make a true comparison between the amounts of money that they're charging the town versus what the outside cost would be if we had outside counsel doing the work? <coughs> That's two good questions, and I will, I will answer this. Um, they are, a, Mr. Gerald is a salary position. However, he does keep track, and Mr. Brother helped me out. I know that he's been very good about the amount of hours he spends on. So in other words, he could tell you, and it was somewhere in the report, it did talk about where he billed his time <coughs> and all that. So there is, that's a good, I mean, I'm glad he's doing that. But I think the big thing that stands out in addition to um, what we're paying, what he, right. when I say fawns outside, <laughs> not through no fault. Well, I guess that also depends on what is presented to the city, to the town. Yeah. And, you know, we all know that we, that's hard to predict, right? Um, what yeah. is presented to us and what isn't presented to us. So it's, hard to budget what your outside legal costs are going to be based on what might be um, presented to us that needs that kind of expertise. Thank you. Mr. Marr? Based upon what you just said, I got a little confused. They said that the town council is on salary, but then you said he bills. <coughs> and he's keeping track of his hours. My question is, is he salary or does he get time and a half? No, no, he's salary. No. He's only doing that out of the grace. People asked him years ago to kind of like right. let the public know how many, and trust me, I, he probably puts then, more hours. Not billable hours. You use not bill billable. No, not billable. It's I'm non billed. Billed. Non billable. Yeah, right. Non billable. Right, it's just accounting for time Accounting spent. purposes I, I have for no that. problem with that. I heard billed. Yeah, it's non billable. Right. So Thank what you. we're trying to get, as Joyce said, <laughs> we want to gather. When, when that, that expense is extremely high, and it's interesting what I found, the 2019 actual budgeted default was for outside legal was like 30000 And I'm like, why that when we've spent an average of 100 and, what was it, 140, if you added the average of 2017 18, 140000 each year. It's almost, that's why they're rolling. Go ahead, Ms. Dennis. Yeah. Dave, just a little history from uh, Joyce and Dave and some people. Basically, uh, when Mr. Barrington was here, he had come up to, uh, I know myself and other people in the town, and he had discussed coming up with our own legal um, department within the town of Hampton. Prior to that, basically, we had certain lawyers, okay? If uh, we had uh, labor negotiation issues, we'd have certain lawyers came and took care of that. If it was, you know, whatever the issue was, we had certain lawyers, and they, they were on, uh, you know, contract with the town. Uh, they do the work for us, and it would be billable hours, and we paid them. And then after that, um, we, were, we started our own legal department within the town of Hampton. I think one of the things that I guess um, that's changed over the years was it was kind of sold to us back then that our own legal department internally was going to be able to handle everything. So we weren't going to be billing up. But unfortunately, um, either because of you know certain issues that our current attorney internally doesn't handle, or uh, maybe because we have too much work going on, and we have to look delve into that more. You know, we've been going outside a lot. So besides having our own legal department, you know, which we pay a salary, you know, to our attorney as well as you know the people that work for them. And a few years ago, we had a uh, part-time attorney that also worked for us and other people in that office. Um, we go outside now for certain things, and uh, you know, so we get so the, that um, count has gone from this amount. To expand it right out. So, I mean, everybody's looked at the numbers here, and you can see that uh, we should probably keep a good eye on this and see, you know, if there are any uh, changes or what should we do? Do we need another attorney in town? Should we uh, go outside? Would it be cheaper to, uh, you know, go back to the way we used to and have attorneys outside that are experts handle certain areas again? I think that's something we should delve into because it has gone from this number to this number over the years. So, that's just a little history on how we've gotten to where we are today. Excellent uh, points, team. Um, anyone else have any comments on that section? I would make. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mr. Ladd. One comment. The baseline should be the number of hours that the in-house counsel presents that he has spent on town legal work, his hourly rate, versus what that number of hours would cost if we had sent it to all to outside counsel and then make the comparison. Regardless of what the other outside council costs are, the in-house council is a separate subdivision of those. And having worked in this field for a long time, 
outside counts litigation for many reasons, not the least of which is conflict of interest or special legal expertise mm -hmm. is not predictable. It can vary dramatically. It doesn't have a defined budgetary uh, cope with curve. Great. Mr. Mara. Based upon what Bob just said, I heard what does the attorney make for a salary and would divide into hours. At the same time, I will assume that we're also going to add his staff because that's the part of the cost. Right. The legal office. I'm making this up. He charges $300,000 and he, he charges ten grand, and we're paying the staff 100000 whatever it might be. I'm just making silly costs up. So it's what does his entire group, including him, based upon the hours they, they are putting in, mm -hmm. But would you also need to keep track of their hours? Because they were doing very important things. And he, they're taking um, tasks away from him to assist him. So I think we'd have to, to make that a viable formula. We'd have to know how many hours the people are putting in that work for him and what they're being paid and put it into one giant bucket. Then you figure out ah, this is what it's costing on the average per case. And then we go outside. Yeah, would you need that, that level of depth? Well, let me, let me stop you there, though. And I would ask, suggest that this summer you go into your budget book and you look at what the cost in right up to 2019, what we budgeted for legal office. They're not working 100 hours a week. The, his staff is, comes in and works as a normal town hall employee. So it doesn't matter if they're here eight hours and they work on one case, if that's what your point is. I, I, I guess I'm not understanding what... Um, he, there are certain cases he's working on. <coughs> he's working helping them with. Right. If they weren't there... Oh, yeah. Well, that well that's why you have an assistant. So you, what's the total cost of his staff for the year is my question. It's, Correct. well, it's in that's the, all. Yeah. It's then, in the budget. I mean. Then yeah. you put that into what Bob's saying. If he was doing this, is the potential, did, would you just suggest it, do we need another attorney? But you need to look at the whole equation. Right. Right. And I think that, this, uh, that the reason it's important, that subject is going to be at the forefront, I think, this year. It came, it propped up right in this little branch about four years ago. <laughs> I'm thinking, David, David, you're, you're looking at it and saying, do we need another attorney? I'm sure that if Mr. Gerald needs a, some help, he will tell us this coming year Good. if he needs. Yeah, he, he tells just, us every year what he needs. I think the only staff that he has in-house presently is somebody that does a little bit of filing for him. Correct. Pretty much right. the secretary. Not secretary. Yeah, just right. A, it's not right. A, it's that's all. It's not. He doesn't have a big staff, so. The simple question would be: Is his billable hourly rate include the overhead of his office, mm -hmm. or just his professional hourly right. rate? When we were billing, we included the total overhead of all the support in the billable hour. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can I make a suggestion? Go ahead. Um, ahead of the August, when we really delve into these numbers. September. September. Um, would it make sense to assign someone on the committee to review these numbers to and have the conversation with the town attorney so that we can understand exactly where the numbers are before we head into September? I don't know if it's so much we should assign a person to work with them, but I think that as chairman, I, I, I will work with getting a little, what do you call it, a paragraph or two together to ask for information like, like we go through Mr. Bridal. Okay. I think that way it keeps it organized. And it's going to give us plenty of time, right, because we're not going to see anybody from the town to November. Right. So that will give us a chance. And, and speaking of that, I ask all of you throughout the summer, to, and I'm a big information giver. So you're going to get a lot of information. So when you're sitting on the beach on July 4th, please read it all. You know what I mean? <laughs> but then I know we're all Save it for a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> or when you're down the events. But yeah, it's a good point. Um, but it just, that, that, um, that was one that area. Um, anybody else have any questions on that uh, section? Mr. Henderson. Oh, the other thing would be is certain legal expertise, you know. Right. Our, our attorney, all right, he's good for this type of things, okay? And then outside the box is some other things that we're going to continue to go outside for because he doesn't have that legal expertise. So that becomes a problem. Even bringing in a second attorney, well, does that second attorney, is he able to do uh, certain labor law issues and certain things like that, you know? So that's always an issue, you know, well, what some, their expertise is. Sometimes in-house attorneys bring their expertise to be able to define who the, the expert needs to be. 
instead of paying an outside firm for discovery. So I would think that our in-house attorney would be able to direct where what expert we need, or at least I would hope they would. We would hope so. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The only thing I would, in, in response to Mrs. Capertis, I would ask in, in confidentiality that you read those memos that we got. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of outside stuff, and I, I'm not sure that it's related to what Mr. Gerald recommended versus he's working with these people. I mean, there's a lot goes on as Russian. In his defense, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that happens in some of those cases or whatever. But anyway, and so good points, though. Excellent points. The other thing I wanted to bring up, um, and this is a question, Mr. Bridal, and it's more of a general question. When you look at our parks and recreation uh, budget, up until about four years ago, um, up until two years ago, they had parking lots under their operation. They also had mowing of fields, and by that, or mowing of town property, which has since been taken away, I believe, Bill might be able to help with that, but five, six years ago by Public Works. My question is, when we look at a budget, when they're talking about, and it's, you know, and, and it's interesting because if you look at their total budget, um, you're really looking at uh, top heavy, 140,000 of it is, is payroll. And so my question is, under uh, grounds and field, okay, we, we actually budgeted $18,050 uh, and the available is 9,000. So they spent half, so they're on pretty much on target. What, what is that, what are the grounds and fields? Because I'm just questioning my own mind when Renee and others come in this year, what, what is it we can tell the public that money's going to? What, what does they mean by that? Well, they have a number of employees that, that take care of specifically the ball fields Mm -hmm. and tuck field okay. the, uh, the stuff over there so when you, when you talk about mowing the mowing that's done is the small little pocket parks and the town office lot here and stuff like that they don't uh, okay. that's now gone out however uh, they still do the the, the major fields and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that so. let, let me add you might know this so the mowing that public works does was that contract out or public works employees do this contract correct right and do we know how much are we saving a lot by going that route? Uh, I'm just curious. I would assume so. Uh, I, I don't know for sure. I'd have to look it up yeah. and find out what it is. I'll, I'll put However, that However, I, I would say that uh, with, with the uh, uh, number of employees we have over to Public Works, I don't think they, they could do it anymore. No, I know that. But I, the reason I bring that up is one of the things that you're going to hear me say a lot this year, and you heard it last year on this board and throughout town, is analysis creativity and suggestions we have a lot of money 26 million dollars and what a lot of the rationale behind what we're doing tonight is start maybe it's a good time because department heads the manager of selectmen are putting together the budget to start thinking out of the box in a big way and I'll talk a little bit more of that later because we continue to to have high cost items we continue to budget after budget, and at some point, and we're going to get into the schools in a second, and I have some ideas on that, I just think we've got to start really being bold and make some tough decisions on what is it that the taxpayer is going to see remedied by a rec department or a fire department or a police department, because I think that will send a great message. And, you know, it's not always about a million dollars less. It's about the it's the thought process, and, and, what did, and David talked a lot about this last year in a very eloquent way about drilling down on issues and making sure that we're presenting them in such a way that people are really thinking about why the monies are there. So that's, that's all for that. Rusty, I'll, I'll add that to the list uh, I'm saying. The other question I had, um, on cemetery and library, do you want to invite them in to give a report? I, there's been so many changes in the cemetery that it almost seemed like they could come into the select board to have an update. I mean, there's some items in the cemetery budget currently that are in the minus. But, but you got to remember, they're two separate. They, they, we well, have I no control that, but, over them, and right. they, they're their own separate. So no, we, I know. We, we just kind of we don't funny. have control over their budget. We don't have control yeah. over their funds. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. But I used to, and the reason I bring that up, and years ago when I was managing state parks, I came into the budget committee, which had no control over what I do, but I gave them information that was valuable on what we were doing in Hampton especially. And I, it was more of a courtesy because 
we had a lot of questions last year on the cemetery, and it just seemed to me that we got no answers. We got yeah. no answers, and we also didn't have any follow up by the trustees. That, and I agree with what you're saying, Rusty, but I wish there was a way we could somehow. Maybe I need to email the trustees to get information, and, and I can do that way. too. But we we have, if you watched Joyce last year, we ended the year shaking our heads. I still don't know what we voted on. Um, but it, it's my understanding with trustee funds and library funds, it is it is completely separate from a town budget. It is dictated by the cemetery trust funds and the library trust funds, and there is no impact at all to the state to the town budget at well, all. Well, no, that's not true at all. They come here to... They, they can, but if they you do. don't like they their do. numbers, their trustees... They're required to. That's fine, but their trustees dictate how the money is spent. Mm. No, I don't think that's, no, that's true. Not, no, that's not... No, no. I don't think... It is. Is it, is it Jenny? Yeah. It is. That's, it is. Yeah, we, we have... I, the used, town I manage has, money we have for no state control. for once we, once the cemeteries. Once the voters... Because they come once before the voters, right. they come before us with a budget. Right. 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 So but once that's done, we have no control. Right. Of okay. Well, but hold on a second. All the pay, if you look at the stubs that come out of the employees, you're right. And what we pay vendors says the town of Hampton payroll on it. So right. I think it is. I think you're right on cemetery burial trust. We don't have a say in that. But I think as far as other items, we approved maintenance of the cemetery last year. The voters approved it. That was asked for us to review. There were a couple of articles. Yeah. I think that they somehow or other need to be accountable to somebody, be it the selectmen or us. Well, that's what Let I'm me saying. use an example. They said, well, they have their own trust fund, which is you are correct, Which sir. is true. But two years ago, the librarian head came in here and wanted $45,000 for windows when we said, gee, you've already got three hundred dollars or $200,000 sitting in your trust fund. Well, she didn't want to spend it, right. so she wanted from the tax The warrant article. She wanted the warrant article. Right. They got the Warren article, but what what is their trust fund for if they're not going to be spending it? I'm a little confused on that front, so we need to get a clarity on that. I will take Mr. Brown's suggestion. I think I am going to email. Um, I don't even know who the chairman of the trustees is. I'll find out. I know a few of the. I know who one of the ladies is. And I can always email her just to kind of get an update on what's. I think because they come before us. Uh, Mr. Henderson, do you have a comment? Did you? No, just my thoughts were. I mean, they do come. Uh, for warrant articles and they do receive taxpayer funds outside of that trust so therefore there is some you know budgetary issues that we discuss you know so why do they have a trust if they need money is the, mostly for is cemetery the, is the building a town building no i'm talking there was the library the no library. i mean that's oh, what i'm, I'm saying sorry. is the library a town library is the building owned by the town i believe so it's part of well, the town that's insurance why she came i think to you for the i mean window. we ensure that well, building yeah. Because yeah. the trust yeah. fund doesn't support the windows of the building that's owned by the town. They never said that, and I would disagree. We, with the we'll answer. find that out right. too. That's a good point. I like that. Uh, but those are just some good of the questions. When I go ahead, Mr. Martin, did you have no? No, I was just saying, saying it's a good question so, because that that would be helpful because that was never brought up two years ago that gee we can't put this because it's a it belongs to somebody else, the, the town, or whatever. So we need you to do this for us. I you would also. That. I would also ask, and, and we're almost done with the, uh, the, uh, the town push, an excellent report by Christy. I would also ask everybody to specifically look at pages 19, 20, 21, where it shows the description of projects, what was budgeted for 2019, what was encumbered from 2018, encumbrance, sign contract, bring it over to 2019, mm -hmm. what has been sent, spent so far this year. I think you'd find some very interesting numbers in there. And it amounts to a lot of money, so I, I would ask you to, uh, you know, to to uh, look at that as well. And the other thing has to do with fund balances and the various <coughs> accounts. And I, I think Rusty is right. So the cable committee, yeah, I bet it's because it hasn't fall, it didn't get right. hit, hit at that time. So we're not, it won't be a problem. So yeah, on that issue, I, it's going to be very important and review the prior months too. Christy does a great summary and it, and really things that stand out. Because as we get into the budget, you can now look at numbers and, and see see what's happening. Um, I had thought tonight I was going to have, and it's my <laughs> my fault. I brought my Surface RT, which I love. However, I didn't have a USB cable, and Bill Lowney uh, graciously went home and he couldn't find the one that matched. But I I didn't bring my iPad because I was going to put it on the screen. But I did want to talk briefly uh, a little bit on the. The schools, and if you didn't print this out, I mean, we'll pass it around, but 
this, this is not, it's just more of an observations, and I'm going to be, uh, Mrs. Bridal is aware, Mrs. Brown Russell, on Friday I will be meeting with Superintendent Murphy and uh, Mr. Lunny um, to go over some questions that I might have. It's going to be a very productive meeting that we're all looking forward to it. And this was the summary that Ginny was so good, and I have to thank Mrs. Brown Russell. She got all the stuff that we needed for us. This was the construction summary, starting with the construction summary on um, the project. Now, I'm going to go through through just a little bit about this, and if you guys didn't bring your copies, um, you can go back and review the emails I sent you, but just some observations where I'm going to be going at with questions, and Ginny, you won't have to, you can write some of this down if you'd like, but I'm going to ask uh, the superintendent and Mr. Lenny about this. So, based on May 1st, Mr. Lenny had provided us with a reconstruction renovation project budget summary, uh, which is the, the nice, colorful uh, page. There is some, what I call things that, I mean, when, when I say stand out. So when I'm looking at this, when I was writing, doing my notes here, I looked at items four, eight, nine, and 10, miscellaneous contracted services, testing, commissioning, other project miscellaneous, and owner's contingency. And if you look at the owner's contingency, <coughs> we have a, when I say a negative balance. I'll tell you the reason I want you to look at that, and I'm sure Mr. Lenny will explain it Friday. I'm concerned that why we had to pay these uh, as, not, not as somebody who's a construction person, but why did have, that have to be extra money that we had to uh, contract these certain services? Because if you look at the next page, he outlines it very well on what those things meant. So project uh, item number four the cost impact of the architect's supplemental info and request for information contingency cost of 137,371 adjustments for family restrooms lighting revision stealing framing translate pipe I personally <coughs> I have questions on that I, I just not quite sure that we should have eaten that cost um, why would the, the contract it? Um, on seven removal and abatement of asbestos uh, mastic Number eight, install drywall ceiling, and then ten structural revisions at the state at the stage and cafeteria. Um, so those are the questions uh, on that area that I hope to get answers for um, on Friday. But the, the the big thing that stood out for me on and I'm gonna after I review this, I'm gonna go around and see if anybody has any questions they want me to ask the superintendent on Friday. Um, one of the things that stood out, Jenny, was in the budget adopted mm -hmm. we have special education cost and we also have transportation cost which are a separate item so the total transportation cost uh, of the school and I'd have to find out what page that's on here it is um, student transportation on page five of six um, the total transportation is one million thirty three thousand four hundred dollars my question is to reflect the actual cost of special education, SAU 90, why don't we have the 313700 in the special education section? Because it really is misleading if it's not, and that's a question that I don't know if we asked it's, last year. Is it? It's any, where it's been placed on our um, MS7 form. Okay, but I, you understand what I'm saying, with right. special ed but is- But when we, when we, talk about the cost of special needs, we also add in the transportation because that's a, one of the most important important and expensive things of special needs. If, if there's a requirement for the form, that's one thing, but the actual format of the budget, I think the public, if I said to the public we're actually spending three million, this is a big difference now psychologically. We're not spending 2664, we're spending three million on special ed. I, and I just put it out there, it's, it's just a, a question that I'm going to ask just so that I have clarity, so that, because I've had people ask me these questions and say, well, why isn't it included? And I said, well, you bring up a good point. So that's just a, it may be a minor thing. It may, like you said, it, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty well stated out there. Um, the other thing we looked at is uh, the adopted 2019, 2020, and remember, that budget commences July 1. So right. the school's on a July 1 year, um, and, and you know there's questions on that. The, um, the only other thing I had, and, and I, 
really want to drill down this year and, and kind of Jenny to give you an idea and to give Superintendent Murphy where these discussions are going to lead to. You and I know and everybody knows in the Seacoast area enrollment is down everywhere and it's going to continue. These are public figures. These are not made up figures. Um, I was talking to another superintendent who I happen to know very well in the state and their enrollment's going down. The reason that's important and I want to put something out there to this committee that we're going to have to be discussing with the school as they come through this year's budget. We have 37 paraprofessionals currently in SA United. 37. We're not talking about what we pay them. We're not, and, and I, you know, we, we were yelled at last year. I had nothing to do with what we're paying them. My question is analysis, analysis. Where is the thought process to present on Channel 22 in social media and to the residents of Hampton? What is the plan, and maybe there is, for the ensuing years with the amount of staff that we currently have, especially it stands out like a sore thumb, because I know what you know as well as I do, the ratio has to be certain, but if your enrollment is declining. It all depends, Brian, if you have special needs, paraprofessionals are also guided by special needs and special services, right. IEPs. So you could have 10 students move in and every one of them needs a single a paraprofessional. Right. And so that would add and sit that would keep your amount up even though your population began. Right. Unfortunately or fortunately, Hampton's population is going up. So the population we, is but the, the children's the school population is going up this year. We mm -hmm. are having more students registering for kindergarten than we've had in the past few years. We are starting to see an increase in that. We are also our special education budget is increasing also at a rate. I and can, that drives your paraprofessionals up. I can tell you that your administration sat at this table and said the enrollment was going down. Well, so I, I mean, I, I and your we have changed in the look around. This housing developments, it has been changing. It's an ever evolving thing, of which we didn't anticipate, or we've anticipated, but we didn't realize that it was growing by as much as it has been. So we anticipate it will be a good year next year. Yeah. But and the only thing I want to add, Jenny, thank you, but one of the other things that stands out, and all of you should have seen this, and this is another discussion I'll have, not under confidentiality, but it's important for the voters to understand that 800,000 or so is those out of district, currently nine. Absolutely, we cannot provide services for those right. children not, in our district. Right, Some of those are $100,000 We know per what child. the cost is, but the important thing... Per that, child, right. right? That's how it gets to I know that. that. That's why it's... And, and the, the important thing to bring this up, we need to let the taxpayers know if these children, let's say, are in grade four, that liability to the town is five years. You see, the next five years. You see what right. I'm saying? What hasn't been said, and you're absolutely right, just so... And Mrs. Browder Russell is right. There is nothing we can do. We have to. We are obliged by law. But we can tell the public when somebody, John Doe on the street, says 830,000, wow, but wait a minute, we are obliged to do that. But to let the people know that that number may not get down, go down for five years, Absolutely. and if anything, it may, may go, go up. up. So that's all I'm saying. I just think these are these were just a few of the areas that I had the questions of. Other thing that people don't realize, if one of these students moves out of town and is homeless, Hampton is still required to provide the services. That's correct. That's correct. So that the the population may not go down for a, a long time, and every one of those is mandated by the IEPs, the individual education process. So special ed is driving the bus. And one of the one of the things that, and I'm just going to go around the table in a second, but one of the important things to see what the focus is, if all that is relevant, which it is. What measures, both in the school and the town, are going to take place in ensuing years to see? So, for instance, if the Pluff household has to spend eighteen thousand on a new roof, they don't have. They may have twenty-three thousand for the year. They've got to find another area to decrease in the budget. That's what my message to the schools is going to be because we talked about the twenty-six million dollar addition. Um, you know, and, and the numbers and all that sort of thing. And, and by the way, and, and we know it's done and it's going to be nice and everything, but it, it passed by 13 votes. So there's still a lot of people in town that are really kind of churning at what's happening, uh, those costs go up. So you're absolutely right in what you're saying. My message or questions of Superintendent Murphy and, and, and our business administrator, Nate Lunny, is going to be what are you going to come forward this year to show that 
in reevaluating reevaluating the budget because there's got to be areas that we can look well, at. I'm glad ahead. you brought that up, Ryan, because if you look down on page six, yep. it tells you what's federally mandated, what's state mandated. That's 83.6 percent of right. the budget. Yep. That leaves you a whopping 17.4 percent that you can change. Well, but 14 point per, 14 percent is a lot of money when you look at total. You know, it could be well, three million. Well, it is, but it's not as as bit large as the 83.6 that we have to come up with. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Mara. Number one, I believe in you know, leading to to a full transparency, and you said that numbers there, which I agree with 100 percent. But I got a little bit confused when you said something, and I just need you to explain it for me. You said one eight. One of these students moves out of Hampton, and right. then you said that they're homeless. If they are homeless, what do you mean homeless? They lost their home. They lost their home in Hampton. In Hampton, and then they moved out of Hampton. And then they had were forced to move out because there was no housing for them available in Hampton. So now they're they're, they're, they're in Epping. Yeah, Epping. Right. So now Epping and Hampton have to share the cost of the transportation and school because Hampton is their home of origin until they have a permanent home. Right. A permanent home? No. Would an apartment be a permanent home, or does it have to be a house? It has to be a permanent residence in which they can live there for a permanent amount of a year. So for, theoretically, an apartment could do if they had one that was reasonable. I just, I'm just trying well, to understand it, it. That's all. It, it all depends. It's all <coughs> governed by the McKinney-Vinto Act, so as long as the apartment falls into that definition, then that would be acceptable. If it doesn't, then it is not. Uh, seasonal housing is not acceptable um, as a permanent housing. Right. So it all depends. It's all governed again by the federal regulations under the McKinney McKinney Vinto. Thank you. No problem. Thank, uh, go ahead, Mr. LeBranch. <clears throat> I think you should be asking, 87% is the federal and state mandated. I think we better be asking the state of New Hampshire yeah. what the hell they're going to do to help us. <laughs> Not just us in Hampton, but all of the it, towns in, Ham in the state. Interestingly enough, Steve, that's what they're doing right now. I know. They're actually talking they're about talking it. They're talking about okay. it now. Berlin, um, Rochester, um, Farmington, those were all at the Capitol yesterday because they were talking about to try to get some of the towns of money because some of the uh, towns in the northern part of the country are closing their elementary schools and closing their schools and combining up there. But these, remember, all of uh, these all of these mandates that come down from state yes. and federal government with no money. Exactly. Um, I think those are the people we should be asking some questions to, because exactly. you can't just keep going to going. the well. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I will add, too, and Mr. LeBranch and I always were thinking on the same wavelength. One of the state representatives put this big thing on social media with the, the, the $20 million. Guess what Hampton's getting out of that? Like 21000 yeah. So it's misleading because we, as Mr. Pluff and I were told, and Mrs. Brown Russell, we're a wealthy community. We get nothing. Right. I mean, right. so it's your, to your point, when you see headlines in the paper, well, they, we're going to get this slush, whatever you call it, it amounts to nothing. And so you're absolutely right. In a lot of this, as, as Mrs. Brown Russell pointed to, we're not going to be able to change, as we know, but it's just nice to talk about it, that yeah. what can we do, what changes can we make, and it, it will be a great meeting. We look forward to seeing it. Anybody have any comments on the school? Go ahead, Mr. Ladd. I have one simple question. How many children each year are placed out of town for lack of housing? Eight. Oh, for a lack of housing? Yeah. I don't know that number. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that number. I'm just curious, if it were even one child a year, would the town be better off uh, leasing a place and guaranteeing that lease? You can't. You that would that. not be permanent housing. You if, you, if, you, if the town <clears throat> is leasing, I don't know how that would work. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Uh -huh. And you know the it's other thing, Robin? You yeah. and the guy's going to love this, and Ginny helped me out with this because it's my understanding Let's say you have a child, one of those nine, that end up coming under our cost, and they then live, they finally live in, they move. We have to go pick them up. Yes, we do. Transport. Transport them. They could be in wherever land, and that's another part of the cost. And it's, it's important stuff for the voters to know because the voters would say, you know what, wow, okay, that's why that makes sense. That's what we're talking about. And, I agree with you, the state and federal. I mean, we look at what we dish out in this community, and it's like, uh, but
But anybody have any more comments for the school? Go ahead, Mr. Ben. You know, the <laughs> I don't need to tell you people this because you know it, but for every dollar that you uh, give the tax collector, um, and when we talk about yep. the school journey, we're not just talking about SAU 90. Yep. We're adding, we have oh. to add in the SAU 21. So, you know, every, every dollar that you spend, 60 cents of it is going to schools. Okay. That's correct. And the other 40 cents are being divided up to into the um, fire department, your police department, your rec department, your DPW, your sanitation, and all of that. It's amazing how much of that dollar is going to schools. It is. It is, yeah. Ginny, the other question I wanted to quickly ask, so you probably don't know the answer to this because we just asked you it last month, but we're almost in the end of June. We still on target. Uh, we are going to be moving we, teachers as of July Well, 1st. no, Kim is already in. I know yeah. some of them are in. <laughs> but my, my point is one of your fellow school members I saw recently, and she she informed me that, yes, we'll be within budget. And I, she had been the same one that said we're slightly under on the April meeting. So I just want to make sure that that. We are slightly under. Well, that's good. We uh, are slightly under, but I, it's I, slightly. <laughs> but we are slightly under, but we will be open and under budget and Very hosting good. a hopefully open house, open house oh, in the fall. Nice. That's what I wanted to have. You're more than welcome to stop in in the summer. Um, I plan on doing that. And to yes. talk to Mr. O'Connor here. He I'm going to bring my wife you. with me. I, so, she would be great. She could show you all the new science stuff that she's going to be really excited about. She loves it. Oh, yeah. it's, it's fantastic. Uh, we held graduation in the gymnasium. There were 852 places inside, no snow, no rain, no <laughs> How many does that hold? Thing? How many does that hold? 900 and something. Beautiful. So it's going, it was oh, it's beautiful. beautiful. It was a nice time. The parents got to see it. But you will, if you want to see it in the summer, call Mr. O'Connor. Call Kathleen Murphy. They will be happy to um, yeah, they always show are. you. Yeah. Um, we do have an announcement in the school, I, I assume that. I think you can make it, Jenny. That um, our um, business administrator has, accept, has, temp, has accepted a new position what? in the city of yeah. Portsmouth, yep. with the oh. city of Portsmouth. Big loss. That is so, a big loss. So he will be um, moving on, and, and we will miss him terribly. But when does he leave? Not until September. Um, September. September. Hmm. I can tell you he's very well respected in this town and through the state. And Ginny and I talk about people I know in the schools that are in high level positions and very, very well respected. He knows yeah, absolutely. his stuff. I mean, absolutely. So he's going to do very well. Good for him. And he's going to make sure that SAU 90 <laughs> is in tip top reports and everything else before he leaves. <laughs> and he and Kathleen are going to um, work together to Thank finish you. out his term. Wow. Any other uh, questions on that? And I'll get those to you, Ginny, too. Okay. And I'm sure we have answers. Um, the other thing I handed out real quick, this is all good stuff, but it's more or less to let the public know. Um, and Ms. Scopertis brought up an excellent point. We also have another fund that uh, has been with us for over 100 years, uh, and Mr. Browder remembers this. There's a trustee fund for Hampton Academy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing, but yet the reason it's important to be good, when you're getting $9,000 each year, so the recipients, and this was all sent email, David, so I don't know if you had a chance to read it. Uh, I know you've been traveling, but all kinds of things that were bought after teachers have requested and staff, plus other things. And it has to be something, too, like electrical or whatever some of the things were on this list. But the important thing to know is, and, and this is the question for Mr. Lunny that I'll have Friday, is where does this revenue but where did, because the, I know people on the trustees and they talk, so the money comes in. I just want to, so we can let me, just transparent is all. And the only other thing I want to mention, Ginny, is, and I think it's great because all your meetings, I hear uh, the PTA donated $1,000, John do. Doe donated $600. I want to find out that total number that we receive every year and where has that gone. And then the final question is going to be, I know there's been several benefactors that have come forth and uh, given money to the school edition, one major family in general, and I think there's a lot, maybe people at this table that are generous, um, but that's important. So the, the question is, where is that money being housed uh, at this point? And that's, we're talking thousands of dollars. So it's, you know, it's money that the school has now, so we just gotta make sure where that's going. Uh, Mr. LeBranch, did you have a question? No, but I'm, without even, without, Without even getting the answer from Ginny, I would have to say the school treasurer. Right. Yeah, well, that's what we're going to, yeah. 
your, your box tops, your PTA, all goes right back into student funds. And but it would be nice activities. to know what that number is. Like Hannaford okay. donates every month. They come in. They've got like three hundred, three hundred a month. This three thousand alone. I just yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it's all good stuff. It'll be a good meeting uh, come up uh, the rest of the week. You also receive reports. I'll ask in, in a one lump sum. Uh, I, I will f first say this: the Public Works were the first ones to send me their report, and I and Mr. Bridal, thank you for all the help in getting them. What an excellent report! Did anybody get a chance to look at the uh, the meeting uh, that uh, Ms. Mr. Jacobs and Jen Hale came in uh, with their? I think they were last night, weren't they? <coughs> well, no, well, not last night, but was it the week they came the in June third, uh, yeah. and there was an excellent mm -hmm. and always. Thank you. Always want to try to find it in my pile. So you want to look at that because it talked about, number one, I'll give you an example, like things like the household, was, household hazardous waste day, which I attended. And it was so good that I had forgotten to bring all my hazardous stuff. And I went back, and it was closed. But Ryan Sharp said to me, oh, we have another one August 24th. It was terrific. Great press on that uh, to Mr. Brado and bring that back to the board. Um, the Mill Pond Dam uh, is pretty much substantially complete for what they said that night. Anne's Lane Sewer repla Replacement, which you remember, that was funded out of last year on a moment's notice because we needed to do that, and then they came back in the spring and finished it. So kind of review that. The Grist Mill renovation um, has been pretty much complete. Uh, Mr. Bridal announced uh, a couple weeks ago and, and more recent, which is excellent. We all sat here last summer and approve the emergency voting for the forced main uh, down yeah. the beach. That has been, that, that is a terrific story. Uh, with uh, Under budget, by the way, and also, uh, I think it was you, right? Basically you predicted it would be done in April, and I think you were like two days off. I mean, it was literally that close. That was excellent. The I only had, thing they had to wait for was the bridge that go, went across right. the uh, eel ditch there, yeah. I guess you call it. That was a, a great, then, great thing. Tide Little Creek. I have no credit. The Park Avenue culvert replacements, because I got a lot of calls in this, so in fairness, the people have to understand that the reason Kids Kingdom is closed is because it's the safety and they've got to do those culvert replacements before and that. that is going to September, be happening. No, that's happening uh, shortly. Oh, good. I believe it's in uh, early uh, July that they're, they're going to be doing the, uh, the culverts and stuff. So hopefully they'll have that done by the end of July, the middle of August, and then they can start working on Kids Kingdom. Yeah. Um, the question I had, Russ, and you may not have the answer tonight. I'll get all this in writing for you for the summer. But the wastewater treatment facility upgrades, you know, two years ago we approved $11 million. And so the questions that people have is, have we spent any money out of that account, whether in engineering? Where does it stand? I, I Chris talked some, a little some bit. Some of that they have, done, they, they have spent some engineering money. They've also, dealing with this, Pipeline. They they want to make sure they get that done oh, okay. Down and, and get that done first. Uh, some of the stuff that they work on, if they've had an issue where a piece or a part of this broke down, they have brought it up to the standard that they need to have so that and it can be used again. So they, they are working on it, but it uh, again, that's a pretty busy department. It's been slow because of the other stuff. Right. Yeah, and and the only other thing I'll add before I turn it back to the committee, I, and I I told Jen Hale this personally. Um, I'm a big information lover, and I have to commend her and the Public Works Department, especially um, the information out on what's recyclable and, and not has been tremendous. The PowerPoints on Channel 22, the information in the community, um, I, and you'll love this, so this past weekend was my wife's birthday, Friday and Father's Day, so one of my kids went downstairs with a pizza box, and it's all got food in it. They were going to do it recycle. I said, no, 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 it goes in the, in the trash. But it's really good, and people are really picking up on it. Find out, throw it out. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's amazing. And I'll tell you, it's, it was an unbelievable, I just think that whole thing is, is coming together really good. Anybody on the Public Works have any comments? Uh, go ahead, Mr. Maurer. Uh, I would just like to say, even though one part of it is, but when I get through reading this, I was very impressed with the quality yes. of the presentation. Uh, very clear. They were doing a lot. They're down to new hires, etc. So I, I would just wanted to give my comments back to the Sanitary and Public Works Department that I personally thought this was an outstanding update. Outstanding. It really was. Yeah. I thought the only time. thing I would add now from what you just said is, is what's the status in reference to our, our future? They could probably add that as another little 
bucket area. And that's what we yes. And I'll they put do that it at this level. It, it, it just it was just fantastic. I was that's very awesome. impressed. Any uh, Mr. LeBranch? Yeah, I just wanted to mention on page two, one of my <clears throat> pet projects, and I know that uh, Mr. Jones sitting at home watching this is going to appreciate. The Mill Pond Dam, Yes. Um, the project was completed within budget. That's really a wonderful, oh, so absolutely. happy about That's that. That's a nice check. Okay. Um, within budget, because that was a, we went back and forth on that thing for years, for as you might remember. Yeah. Coming back for more money, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I didn't know if that was going to be an you know, a, a money pit that you just keep dropping money into, but it's done Good. under you get, budget. If you get a chance to go up there and take a look at it. it I'm going it up really there with my swimming suit as soon as it warms up. Uh, jumping the, 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 the turtles in. and that. Can we get on a video of that, by the way? <laughs> the other thing I wanted to mention on, on the same page is the, the one thing that I thought was interesting, the grist mill renovation. Yep. The total scope of work exceeds what was approved by the Warren, the Warren article due to cost increases, and then, but we <laughs> hope to cover the additional work yeah, out of the department's the budget. Mm -hmm. And and then I, I just was thinking to myself when I read this, but also watched it on TV, the department's default budget. Right. Right. Where's the money? And I understood it wasn't going to be that. Probably not a lot of money. It, it's not a lot of money, but it's, it, it didn't make sense to only go that you had so much and not finish. And not finish the sign. Not finish. So the we signing. might be yeah, so, better off. So you're, you're better off in the long run to have the building. Just finish. Right. But I had the same thing, Mr. Henderson. Yeah, just a quick one on there, out of the public works one there. A little plug there for uh, Bob Walker, retiring after 42 years. 42 I can't years. say enough. I was lucky to work, uh, you know, side by side in the town with him for a long time, and I know. Mr. Pluff over here works side by side, just a, what an amazing man, put yeah. 42 years in hard work and dedicated gentleman, um, and we wish him uh, a long and healthy retirement, and he'll be sorely missed, just a great, great man, and a yeah. great town employee. Good resource. You know, any sewer line that's been put in the town in the he past 40 no years, he, would, he could tell you about what it was, so yeah. Yeah. better than anything else, he, he's a great resource. Yeah. We have, uh, and it's funny, as a good segue into the, the police thing, we talked about retirees, so we also want to congratulate Bill Gay, who is retiring in June of 37 years uh, with the police department. Yeah. So uh, oh, yeah. we certainly, certainly wish him well. Does anybody have any questions or comments on the police report by Chief Sawyer? No. I do. Go ahead, Mr. Marr. Uh, it wasn't as long as the sanitation, but I think that they hit all the major areas and compared years. And I was also impressed with, with the write-up and what they sent to the selectmen. And, and it's nice that we now get a chance to look at this. To Thank see you. All yeah, what we pushed for that. So, so I, think, I think it's important to I think I think that the police, whatever, who, who put it all together, all the young, the, the chiefs, I thought they did it also a very nice job. Anybody have any comments on, on Chief Sawyer's report? And then the last one of the major departments, I didn't ask for the rec department, but I may ask for one through Mr. Bridal come the fall. We're going to see them anyway, but uh, the three major ones, of course. Um, the fire department, we received the report. Uh, we certainly, since we last met um, on June 3rd, we promoted uh, Justin Cutting to deputy fire chief. And uh, <coughs> I, I am so proud of that gentleman. Uh, we, we remember sitting in the old town hall. <laughs> Uh, Jenny, Mike, and I, and two, September 1996, when he was sworn as a firefighter, Mr. LeBranch was in the audience as well uh, at that time, and, and we also promoted Matt Clark that uh, night to lieutenant, and I know Mr. Bridal was there too, uh, they always come out for this stuff, and uh, so that's that's a great, and plus we uh, we hired Matt Broad, with another local, Mike well, uh, no, Matt. Matt Broad, Matt, Matt Broad. Yeah, we hired so. Matt Broad, who, uh, you know, a local uh, winter kind of kid whose father's lieutenant of the fire department, a nice kid, uh, did very well. This is a nice story, you know, we keep seeing a lot of this and um, going on. Did you? Yes, go ahead, David. Um, in reference to the fire department, uh, they, they've done a nice job also, but I was watching TV on Sunday, the Sunday news is on Channel 4, and they had an article on fire departments. It was very thorough, by the way. 
and it was talking about, it's been on the news where the 9-11 people weren't getting the proper monies, and you'd seen that, that's big stuff, and all that very important. But then they went back in time, the, very thorough, and at the end of it, they were talking about, in the old days, you would have either all over your face, that means you worked hard, but you know, you really got to wash it all off. So they, they showed a fireman washing down and getting out of it. And what they did point out, which I was very pleased about, and it made me think of this budget committee and what we pushed for last year, but all the firemen need a second suit. Turn over. Yeah. Turn and over. they were yeah, showing yeah. one of the suits yeah. being yeah. washed, but they said <coughs> another one. Right. And, and a lot of these carcinogens are on your suit, and that's why you're doing it. And that we, good, right. working with the fire department, made it a Warren article, and it passed. That uh, we're like ahead of our time in a positive way. I thought that was great. So the one thing I would ask, there is one thing I, I would ask the fire chief. They talked about the, the over, um, because all of the new plants have plastics and carcinogen. They, I don't know what they have for. Do we need to get them special face masks they so they can bring? They, they have, have special face, face masks. They, they've, they've, re they've replaced their breathing apparatus within the past three or four years, and so they're, they're right now. Their breathing apparatus is actually up in pretty good shape. Terrific. That's all I wanted to know. That, that was my question. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Uh, any other comments <coughs> on those reports? All right. So I guess. I, oh, go ahead, Mr. Brent. I Grant. certainly would be. Remiss if I didn't mention under communications the Hampton Fire Alarm operator. Oh, yes. Cassie Levitt, <laughs> the recipient of yes. the New England Emergency Dispatches Association Telecommunicator of the Year. Yeah, that's great. Congratulations to her. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well done. Yep. She well was done. at that meeting. Was right. it that meeting or the one before? I was at there too. A couple of weeks ago. I think it was. No, Cassie was, was there. there. Yeah. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. um, now on to the Selectman's report. I guess, Rusty, anything new uh, as we go into the I think summer? you've gone over everything. <laughs> so. I, got, I know. Uh, Mrs. Huh? Brad O'Russell. No, I think we're all set. We're all set. And Mr. Ladd. Uh, the Sandcastle contest has begun. The artists are all in town. The sponsor castles have been put together. The artists will start tomorrow constructing their work. Hopefully the weather will not interfere too much. The weekend is expected Beautiful. to be wonderful. And one thing that struck me is these artists will present their artistic skills mm -hmm. to more people in the next 10 days than will visit 90% of all the art museums in the country in the next year. So it gives you a sense of the impact that this sort of thing has. And they will be presenting it to many people who do not think of art museums as part of their daily life or experience. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the weather, you know, it's actually after yeah. Friday morning. Yeah. Beautiful Friday afternoon, yeah. all day Saturday, all day Sunday into Monday, so good. Right. Today for a rainy day was pretty good. Yeah. 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 Right. A lot true. of people still down there. A um, <laughs> couple more quick things. I would ask before I forget, and we all received um, and I, I actually forwarded this to you by email. Uh, thanks, Mr. Bridal, sending this along. Um, over the summer, look at the great work Christie's done on, on the comparison. We asked for that three-year comparison. We're going to be talking more about that as we go into September. And, and where the numbers have risen or what have stayed the same or what we have done on these budgets is very important. There's a lot of material, so I would, I would ask you to look at it. Um, July and August, there'll be no meetings. I, I know Mr. Ladd pushed for June, too, but two yes. out of three of them. Uh, how about September instead? Well, September, we've got to have two. <laughs> yeah, we have two. <laughs> yeah, we Compromise. Um, is <laughs> there any other new business? Be, and before I go into just announcing two more things, anybody yes. have? Yes, go ahead. Yes. I, I wouldn't want to miss the, um, that Bob and I went to the chat meeting this afternoon. Oh, yes. David, you weren't here at last month's meeting, but you had asked a question about uh, regional. Why chat was not more regional, mm -hmm. and it was. I asked that question, and it was answered. The um, chat is an outgrowth of SHEA, which is that seacoast that includes Seabrook. Okay, <coughs> that grant project. It's focused on Hampton. Uh, the focus now is to continue working in Hampton with the ultimate goal of transmitting lessons learned to other communities. So we're sort of a pilot program, and the other thing is that. The common practice, this was from another one of the uh, people, is to focus at the local level in order to address site-specific vulnerabilities, needs, and interests 
and then this afternoon we spent two hours meeting and we went over plans um, from Norfolk, Virginia for the coast of Louisiana, the entire state, and also the city of Boston. The things that they have already spent lots and lots of money on planning and looking at and figuring out how they're going to deal with uh, the coastal flooding problems. And very interesting, we're still putting together a lot of information. I think the next meeting we're going to actually start um, you know, coming up with solutions because we've been gathering the information and then how do, what solutions do we have specifically for Hampton? Because that's what people want to know at the end of the day. Sure. And so yeah. we're working towards that and doing, a, a, I think, a really thorough and good. good job. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, the only other, I'm, I'm glad you, you said that on the new business, because I had one item. Tomorrow night, I will be attending the first meeting as your representative to the master Ooh, plan. Yes, you will. Mm -hmm. uh, along with members of the planning board, uh, Chairman Griffin from HBAC, uh, Selectman Waddell, who is the Selectman's representative of the planning board. Barbara Kravitz is going to be on that committee. We have uh, Sharon Raymond from the Conservation Commission, Jason Bashan, the town planner, and I think there's one more, Tom McGuirk from the zoning board. So it's going to be a good good cross section. We will be meeting the second Wednesday of every month, I think right up through November, and that's pretty much where the first one's on the agenda. Most of the agenda is there, so I'm looking forward to that. We are be meeting with the school administration on Tuesday, September 17th. The next meeting following that, which I'll remind all of you, is October 15th. And one of the things I wanted to do this year, and it's just the, the kind of the way I like to do it. Instead of throwing all the dates out there, you know how they change, you know, when the budget, I didn't want to throw all the November, the Tuesday and Thursdays in December. Let's keep it light for the summer. You'll get information as I meet with uh, Christina to plug in. We will keep Tuesdays and Thursdays for as we uh, historically did. And I'll, I'll let you know the public hearing dates. You know, but keep in mind, just so that you all know that November, December, January, those are the three biggies as far as you know, multiple meetings, but there will be a schedule. But the, the next two meetings, the next one won't be for three months, September 17th. Then October, we usually have a guest. I may have Christy come in. I'm not sure what we'll do at October. I see what we did last year. But it may be a review of what we talked about that we're looking at this summer and any new things that could happen. Um, we're all on email throughout the summer. We're all on phone calls. We're all in touch with each other, so please keep in touch. Um, and I think this is a great meeting. Uh, any closing comments from anyone? Okay, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Channel 22. We'll adjourn at 8.15. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.